Hello and welcome back. In this video I will be showing you how to launch this monstrosity that we have built in the previous episode and get it off the ground and get it towards Jewel and maybe even, you know, arrow break around Jewel. So just a quick recap. In the previous episode we have built this small SSTO and of course we have tested it to see that it works pretty well, not as SSTO but rather as a plane. We have built a lot of small probes and then we have finally built a lander that will carry them all all the way to the jewel. So, but that's the previous episode. Let's get into this one. Ready? Three, two, one, go! Look at that abomination rising up. Oh yeah, look at it. Oh uh, well, yellow clock, but I'm showing this as a two and a half time acceleration. By the way guys, this episode took roughly 6 hours to film, so yeah, I'm showing you a lot of accelerated things. However, as you can see, the craft is ascending towards the heavens and everything is looking stable and nominal. Jebediah, Valentina and Bill Kerman are happily flying on board the Groundworks space lines all the way to Chul. There we go, getting ready for that. I'm reducing the thrust and getting ready for that first solid motor disposal that will be happening in three two one go and then getting rid of solid motors and immediately the side boosters now our thrust weight is 1.10 but it's good enough it will get us we are all the way our epoapsis is already at 70 kilometers, which means only a little bit more push and we will be out of the atmosphere so now i'm po pointing you know uh, east prograde to be able to get some horizontal velocity and get us all the way. This rocket had a little bit steeper launch profile than the others because it has so high part count that I'm not sure how it would withstand the aerodynamic pressure and you know max Q at lower altitudes. I don't think it would be a good idea. So because of its mass and component count and everything I think it's smarter to have a little bit more steep ascent profile. How are you guys launching your vessels? I mean, do let me know in the comments below, I would really like to hear them. By the way, I have literally left confetti, you know, rather than clamshell uh, fairing deploy because of the space plane uh, and stuff. So, there we go, 1000 meters per second to circularize and then we shall be golden. Then the next thing what we need to do is just to wait until the uh, window to jewel presents itself and then eject. I mean, the bottom stage of the Saturn V rocket looks amazing and we are burning our guts out, so there we go. Alright, everything is looking great and 100 by 100 orbit, beautiful. So, now we have to wait for the Jewel transfer window. So let's select Jewel as a target. And let's see, maneuver node, give me a transfer to Jewel. There we go, create it. 2000 meters per second, and it will take basically majority of our stage seven and stage six, but it will be happening in 55 seconds. I mean, I did use the magic of time skipping and editing to get there. So in the real life, it took two years where I was just waiting for planets to align while I was drinking another cup of delicious coffee that I made for myself. Yep, what can I tell you? It works. All right, so let's burn. Getting ready for that stage separation in seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and ignition. There we go. And we will be able to complete the ejection burn completely on this stage. We will even have a little bit once we go, once to go back, so. There we go, getting ejected out of the Kerbin Sphere of Influence and just onwards to the transfer orbit towards Joule. 700 meters second per second to go. I mean, this craft has a pretty nice aesthetic look to it. When I'm designing my craft, I like them to be beautiful and, you know, just look amazing. What can I tell you? All right, we're extending our apoapsis until we get ourselves a jewel encounter and right about 
there with a tiny correction and there we go all right <clears throat> so that actually secures us a dual encounter at the ascending node we're gonna do a little bit of finagling to ensure that our dual transfer is actually optimal because currently it's not really that optimal and i think we're crossing the jewel on the wrong side yes okay that we will need to tweak and guys to be honest in the real life this actually tweak took me way longer than i would really like to admit it so just think of it that the amount of finagling was i would say in real time roughly between 20 minutes and an hour or and a half hour so I'm going to accelerate it a little bit to keep things interesting and snappy for you. Normally in this series I don't cut out anything, but just tr trying to figure out which component works is, I think, not the world's most funny and interesting, you know, approach. So look, in real time it took me that much time to outline it. So my craft already went half the way out of the Kerbin's sphere of influence. So. Maneuver node, alarm, and bye-bye Kerbin. Bye-bye Moon. I mean, that being said, this really does look like an interplanetary craft. What can I tell you? So, as we approach the maneuver node, we have a tiny correction of 8.4 meters per second, but very important to make sure that we land at the correct place in Joule. There we go, three, two, one, and... Okay, I'm gonna thrust limit this because I really cannot time 0 0.6 seconds of burn time. So, well, four seconds I can actually manage. So currently we're burning at, well, basically 12% of our thrust. I think that's good enough. Okay, getting ready, 8.4 meters per second. We have total of 168 meters per second in this stage. I'm just making sure that I align my stages correctly because I have a feeling that will be messed up. Ooh, I think I, we started, we are burning too late. Okay, I think that's good enough. Okay, at the apoapsis, we're gonna have another maneuver when needed, just to make sure that we correct our trajectory. There we go, some final adjustments. I just want to make sure that I, when I get to the jewel that I will be... The whole idea why I will have this big shield is I want to be arrow breaking. And I was first trying to get an arrow break over a lathe, but that actually was way off. So I decided to go for a low jewel periapsis uh, arrow break. So we will be arrow breaking in the jewels clouds not lathes. All right, so that requires a tiny correction burn of 34.9 meters per second, for which I'm aligning just now. There we go. And that burn is gonna happen in two years and 295 days. There's my craft, get ready and let's hit it. By the way, guys, you're seeing this at, I think roughly Two and a half between two and a half and the four time time acceleration so you have a gut feeling of how long the real thing took all right 34 meters per second uh, that will be happening in two years man these transfers are long and you can see that i'm really struggling hard to keep the narration by the way guys sorry if i've been you know a little bit uh, uh, posting rarer videos. This one actually took a long time to make. It's a really, really uh, long time to actually build this old craft, translate it, uh, get it over there, test it, and then still you, there might be shenanigans. Yeah, so you never know. Okay, and as we approach our maneuver node, says he, well, 300 days still away from it, uh, we will be doing this tiny correction burn. We are already aligned and our thrust uh, is we're burning still with 12% of the thrust. So the burn will be roughly 19 seconds in total, which is good. All right, getting in there. Okay. 
okay 24 days now we're getting really close and there we go burn time in one minute beautiful okay and now we will be monitoring the jewel periapsis and how it aligns because we are shooting for a jewel periapsis where we just skim off the atmosphere so and jewel atmosphere goes up to 200 kilometers so if we just dip, let's say 296 or 198 ish, I think we will be golden. So there you go. Okay, I think that's actually, ooh, no, 353, yeah, 193. Yeah, I'm gonna tweak it on later if I need to. Now, let's go and enjoy the approach that we have towards Jewel. That's gonna be another 280 days, good. Talk about long travel times. You know, it really puts things into perspective how just large the solar system is. And consider that this is actually, what, what, one quarter of size or less. So, yeah. All right, there we go. Let's see if we can get ourselves a nice jewel encounter picture. I'm going to extend the antenna. To make sure that we have a connection to the KSC. There we go, we have. Beautiful. So if we're here, okay, the jewel should be that away. So technically prograde on the marker. Let's do it, see if we can do some science. Try pressure, we already did that. Pressure we did. Gravioli, we didn't. Let's transmit it. There we go, beautiful. All right, EVA, let's do some cool selfies, shall we? Maybe not, I think the EVA is just enough. Okay, so we need to actually now point, let's see if we can accelerate a little bit closer to Joule because I have to figure out where the hell is Joule. Okay, if I accelerate like this, do we see Joule now somewhere along these lines? Come on, radial in. Somewhere over there. I don't see it. Come on, where is Jewel? Oh, I think I might see it actually. It's a tiny speck on the horizon. I think we need to accelerate time so we get a little bit closer to it. Yeah, I'm still trying to find it. Okay, now we're much closer. Now we should technically see Jewel. Somewhere. Ah, there, there we go, there it is. Okay, so there's Jewel and uh, time for some cool pretty pics. So let's see first, first things first. Our periapsis is 193. I think that's a little bit on the lowish side. We want at least 100, 196, 1, 000, yeah. So we want it to be roughly 196 or 198,000. So there we go. Beautiful picture as we approach Joule. By the way, this is, I think, stock visual enhancements together with... No, that's actually Astronomer's uh, mod, I think. And we have see the lathe in the background. Okay, beautiful. So now we're going to go for an EVA. You're going to do an EVA report and you're going to take a magnificent selfie. Okay, Val, turn around, please. Come on, come on. Yeah, wow, awesome. I'm amazing! Wow! Looks great! And look! Jewel and Valentina have the same color! Which brings me to the question... Maybe the Kerbals got from Lathe? Maybe they originate from Lathe? That would explain why they have so green color from the Jewel's, you know, radiation. Okay, so just doing some final, you know, science experiments before we actually start to go and for the aero capture. 
which is gonna be one of the most risky maneuvers I have done in the recent like couple of years because honestly guys I have no idea what I'm doing okay we point that way so after a very very small burn we will be reducing our periapsis to 168.4 so six kilometers um, this is just an arbitrary number but I thought we needed to dip well below in the atmosphere to be able to get an aero capture but not too low so that we don't get burned to a crisp and basically disintegrate as um, in millions small pieces so inflating the heat shield we're gonna do a lot of science because i want to do a metric crap ton of science before we enter the joules atmosphere so as you can tell i'm doing a lot of you know transfer transfer and all of the science I'm actually transferring because rather than just keeping it for the return, I want to transfer it just in case this, this aircraft or spacecraft doesn't survive. Yeah, you can see I have a lot of confidence in my own designs and that's why I transmit whenever I can and, you know, losses be damned. Okay, there we go. So I want to be having the thermometer here, the barometer, so that I can conduct more science. We're going to point, you know, pro grade and this is gonna be fun so the moment we hit the atmosphere which should be around 200 I'm gonna quickly execute the science, science experiments and then close off the antenna so okay getting ready log temperature send log this send good temperature send and once we're done retract the antenna good just before the heating beautiful so now we're starting to heat and then we come to the lovely shot that you guys have been seeing in the intro. Look at us go. And the, this is the reason why everything had to fit within the 10 meter fairing because right now this heat shield is the only thing that's protecting us from the rapid unplanned disassembly courtesy of Jules the Torturer. Yeah, there we go. So, but we still need to dip well below to be able to actually oh that heat shield is getting dangerously crispy are you worried well bill is jab and val are just being awesome yeah nah now bill is awesome as well there you go bill all right come on let's see let's see if we manage to get an aero capture on jewel because that would be great because then i wouldn't need to fire up my main engines that would be just amazing come on hit it and there we go the aspect change means that we have gone from an escape trajectory over Joule to an orbit around Joule. How high? I have absolutely no idea. Let's check. Yeah, it's pretty high, but all in all, the apoapsis is dropping, which is amazing. And that means once we actually get... Oh, look. And the first one... Oh, oh, I think I've timed this one all too well. All right. Yeah, I get it. Aero captures are fun. And the apoapsis is height is dropping. So now is my idea that we get down the apoapsis first up to the level where it will be the first outer planet. I think it's actually Paul or which one is it? Paul, exactly. So this one will be mainly for Paul. So amazing. Now, what I want to do is, first and foremost, I want to take an awesome picture because after this kind of, uh, you know, maneuver, we have survived and we have to celebrate another day. Jeb, go and make some awesome selfies. See guys, and that is how you get captured into the orbit around Joule using a big ass shield and even bigger ship. Jeb, smile for the camera. Yeah, this is gonna be screenshot for the today's episode for sure. In the coming episodes, I'm gonna show you how to launch the probe in the next, uh, in the, in the old moons around Joule and how to land this uh, space plane onto the lathe. So stick around, hit that subscribe, and I will be seeing you in the coming episodes, which will be coming shortly. See you then.